We've had for many years a very good relationship with the Kurds, as you know. Well, we do get along great with the Kurds. We're trying to help them a lot. They fought with us. They fought with us. They died with us. They died. We lost tens of thousands of Kurds died fighting ISIS. I don't forget what happens someday later, but I can tell you that I don't forget. Their sons and daughters were killed fighting the Islamic State. 11,000 Kurdish men and women gave their lives to destroy the caliphate. Their reward? To be abandoned by their erstwhile American allies and left to the mercy of their enemy, Turkey. Apparently, we did forget. For the past five years, Kurdish forces in northern Iraq and Syria have been the boots on the ground in the war against ISIS. The Kurds have been by our side through the war in Iraq and even aided in the discovery of Osama bin Laden. When ISIS began conducting a genocide against Christians and other religious minorities in 2014, the Kurds were the first to lay down their lives in the fight against Islamic extremism. It was an honor for our film crew to get to know some of these men and women while we filmed our documentary, The Longest Road, in Kurdistan from 2014 to 2016. But now, we've seemingly abandoned them. Turkey has intensified its assault on U.S. allied Kurds in northern Syria after President Trump cleared the way. The Kurdish forces who we've accompanied in their fight against ISIS are now under attack themselves from a U.S. and NATO ally. But why? A new investigative report from Newsweek alleges Turkey's government is already leveraging Trump's business ties in the country in exchange for something it wants very badly. And it all starts with the Trump Towers in Istanbul. Trump himself didn't build these towers. Their developer, Dogan Holding, paid Trump's company millions of dollars to use the president-elect's name. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has pledged closer relations with the U.S after meeting Donald Trump at the White House for the first time. It's despite Turkey's anger over Washington's decision to arm Syrian Kurdish fighters who Ankara consider a terrorist group. Today we face a new enemy in the fight against terrorism and again we seek to face this threat together. We offer our support to the Turkish nation. Today, President Erdogan was in Serbia. He has recently threatened to invade Rojava to attack the Syrian Kurds. He sees them as terrorists because they're connected to Turkish Kurds fighting for independence from Turkey. He wanted to wipe out. He, he has a big problem with the Kurds, as everyone knows. They were lined up to go out and wipe out the people that we just defeated the ISIS caliphate with. And I said, you can't do that. You can't do it. And he didn't do it. Cut to four months later, and that's exactly what's happening. Turkey is now attacking our allies, and some of Trump's most ardent supporters are wondering why we're letting it happen. So the Kurds stepped up when nobody else would to fight ISIS. If we abandon them, good luck getting anybody to help America in the future with radical Islam, Al-Qaeda, and ISIS. Uh, if you believe that Iran is a threat to the region, they're the biggest winner of this. And you may be tired of fighting radical Islam, but they're not tired of fighting you. Both Republicans and Democrats in the U.S. have warned that allowing Turkey to attack the Kurds would lead to yet another Turkish-led genocide and send a troubling message to American allies across the globe. It also would mean the inevitable return of Islamic extremism that we've fought so hard to defeat over the past few years. It appears as though there have been casualties on the Kurdish side. Are you concerned about escalation and are you concerned that Erdogan will try to wipe out the Kurds? I will wipe out his economy if that happens. We'll see how he does it. He can do it in a soft manner. He can do it in a very tough manner. With casualties already being reported, I think it's safe to say that we do not have time to just sit around and see what happens. Here's how you can make a difference. Hello, my friends. Richard Campos here from The Longest Road. I'm asking you to please step up and say something. Say something to your congressional leaders, to this administration, that is wrong. Purely, purely wrong, what we just did. Just make a difference. Thank you again. Dear friends, please reach out to your elected members and tell your government you do not support this deserting of your most trusted allies who have helped in the fight against ISIS. Please do speak up. 
We are counting on you. Thank you. Follow my dear friend Richard Campos as he continues his humanitarian trips to Iraqi Kurdistan during this troubling time, and follow Namam Ghafori for on the ground updates in the region. And please make a donation to Joint Help for Kurdistan. We cannot thank you enough for your support. <laughs>